wearing a smile as he tries to manage the situation, President Cyril Ramaphosa will have to navigate the challenges of forming a government with other parties and a slight hint regarding his view of how the government must be constituted. We are all called upon to recognize that the results of the election in the end reflect the will of the people. What this election has made plain is that the people of South Africa expect their leaders to work together to meet their needs. They expect the parties for which they have voted to find common ground, to overcome their differences, to act and work together for the good of everyone. Germany has been on this road for a long time. The coalition government basically is a mixed government, uh, uniting parties from uh, different backgrounds uh, into one uh, joint government. And then they would come together in the government and try to pursue uh, joint objectives in this, uh, in this government, although they may be from different political angles. Though that's the gist of it. It just comes naturally with proportional representation in parliament. So in Germany we have been doing it for like uh, 30, 40 years now. We have gained quite some experience. And uh, well, we, it's difficult actually to uh, compare one country with the other because conditions are always very different. We uh, draw a couple of lessons from our experience, uh, what works and what doesn't work with coalitions. So I think the most important thing at the beginning is to build trusts. A similar view from the Norwegians. Of course, in Norway we had coalition governments since the 1960s. Uh, and uh, normally coalition governments are uh, with one bigger party and some smaller parties. But uh, in other places in Europe you also had coalitions with uh, the two biggest parties, for example, uh, like in Germany. Uh, so there are many models that have been tested. And then it's also sometimes coalitions have majority support in parliament. Sometimes they have minority support in parliament. So that's also a distinction. Uh, many models of uh, coalition governments and many models of, of how you make it. Sometimes you go... Uh, into an election with already a common uh, manifesto for what you're going to do um, but it's also quite common to negotiate after election results uh, because then you also know the strength of the different parties after the election. The stability of the country will be taken into consideration as coalition talks begin. In my view there is no reason to panic because we are in a constitutional democracy where the rule of law reigns supreme and I've, I've got a lot of faith and confidence in South Africa's institutions that they're going to carry us through any transition that is required and I'm also confident that the spirit of unity, cooperation and reconciliation that has become part and parcel of the South African body politic is going to prevail and guide our leaders in the political space to be able to do things that are in the national interest. Put the national interest above party political interest. We need a stable economy, we need a growing economy, we need to create jobs, we need to end poverty, we need to position South Africa as an attractive destination for local and foreign investors. We've got a great country, uh, we're seeing load shedding now decreasing, we're seeing improvements from Transnet, and I think all those factors combined, they really augur well for a reset of our economic narrative globally so that we can be an economic superpower and can play our own role in geoeconomics. Political parties have strong positions. Yes, the confidence and supply model involves one of the big parties being the executive and the other having all the oversight positions. So having the Speaker of Parliament, the chairs of portfolio committees, and positions, let's say, like the public protector, etc., like that, so that we ensure that we have the oversight over government and can hold them to account. We would also, for example, look at reconstituting the Judicial Service Commission so that it wasn't dominated by a single party, etc., etc., etc. If to go into a coalition, we would want to take the Home Affairs Ministry because we want mass deportation to happen of illegal foreigners. 
you want people that came here on the back of a crocodile to go back in this country and we'll make sure they don't go back on the back of a crocodile we'll take them back we can't sit back anymore while South Africans don't have jobs so for us mass deportation is very high on our agenda we as the EFF will be engaging with different political parties on how we elect leadership of parliament and constitute a government that will lead South Africa for the next five years. We will engage with all political parties with an appreciation that a government should be constituted within the next 14 days, meaning that some of the issues might be resolved after the base agreements have been reached. The third largest party is contesting the results. Nobody must force us to say now this is what are as a result. Well, the results are not correct. I think the institution must satisfy us that they did look into the issues. The ANC says it will never entertain a call for President Ramaphosa to step down. Ramaphosa is the president of the ANC, and if you come to us with those demands, forget it. If you come to us with a demand that Ramaphosa must step down as a president, that is not going to happen. We've got no such mandate. We are not going to engage with political parties on the basis that we don't want to talk to so and so and so and so. Uh, we're not going to do that. South Africa will have to navigate it's this challenging terrain. South Africa must equalize the playing field. Um, it's a warning to ANC that something needs to give. The people are demanding results. The, the people are demanding change. The people know better. The people know a country like South Africa has enough riches to make sure that everybody who lives in South Africa is comfortable. And so it should be a warning to other leaders as well that you must take care of your people. Well, uh, there's been some interesting uh, sort of fact-finding missions that the political parties themselves have been undergoing in the past year. Uh, one of the countries that they have uh, been to is uh, Denmark. They've been also to uh, Germany uh, to try and understand, you know, how coalition governments have been working in those countries. Of course, those countries have uh, quite a number of years, some even a hundred years of experience in constant coalition government. So there are examples where they have been uh, working relatively stably um, across uh, Europe, uh, but also in Latin America, uh, where they have been working from time to time, especially when some of these mass uh, political parties uh, drop in support uh, below 50%. So there are examples that uh, South Africa can look to, certainly. So, Fimo Gwen, Welcome to Noble Black News, where empowerment meets truth. Our mission is to uplift and empower the black community. We stand for truth, integrity, and representation. Our stories are your stories, told with pride and passion. Join us as we celebrate our heritage and our future. Together, we are stronger, louder, and more united. Noble Black News is your voice, your platform, your news. We bring you the stories that matter with integrity and heart. Our commitment is to the truth, no matter the cost. We highlight the achievements and struggles of our community. Every story we tell is a step towards empowerment. We are more than news. We are a movement. Join us in making a difference, one story at a time. Together, we can change the narrative. Noble Black News, empowering our community, one story at a time.